Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to go through a very special application of differentiation. It's called the Newton's iteration method applied to the function minus x cubed plus x plus 3. In fact, this is a cubic and and, and we don't have like a good formula to find the roots of this function. So that's why we rely on a numerical technique, iteration technique to approximate to the root of this cubic. Um, and the question is asking us to use a Newton's method uh, to start at x1 equals zero. In fact, we will show that the Newton's method fails to apply for this problem because every time you iterate the scheme, you get farther and farther away from the actual root uh, of, or actual zero of this uh, cubic function. And I'll just show you the graph of the function here. So there is only one uh, x-intercept as you see. Um, and we're going to show that we, you won't be able to uh, get closer to this root here uh, when we choose x1 to be zero to start with. So x1 is going to be zero here. So we're going to start from here. It's, it's a, little, a little bit far from the actual root because the actual root is in between one and two. So as you see that, we're going to be shot off somewhere uh, far away from the root uh, so that once we get into that zone, when we get to the left half plane, there is no way to get back or, or to be shot back to somewhere close to uh, this root here. And I just want to remind you about uh, Newton's method uh, in this video. Uh, we're trying to get an, a good approximation to a zero of a function. Let's say like C is the zero of the function and F is differentiable on an open interval containing uh, the zero of the function. Uh, to approximate C, we follow three steps. First off, we make an initial guess or initial estimate for X1 that, that, that supposedly be close to C. And then we determine this approximation. This is an iterative uh, approximation. Uh, obviously, it starts from n equals 1. If n equals 1, this is x2 equals x1 minus uh, f of x1 divided by f prime of x1. So you just evaluate that. You get x2. And in the next step, you take n to be 2 so that you get x3. And that's equal to something written for x2. Once you have x3 and then you write the same thing for x4 and on and on and on. When do you stop this iteration? Well, whenever you reach the desired accuracy. Uh, and how do you determine that? Well, you measure the absolute value of the two successive approximations. If that is less than the desired accuracy, then that means you're getting closer and closer to the root. And then you should stop. And obviously xn plus 1, this is the point where you stop. Uh, is going to serve as the final approximation. So for some reason, if the error uh, or this difference here, difference of the two successive approximations is not achieved uh, to be less than uh, the desired accuracy, so then you have to go back to step number two and then you maybe add more iterations to the scheme or or even you go back to step number one and change your initial estimate. As I mentioned earlier, so these are, as you see, these are the iterations, number of iterations. And we start with x1 equals zero. Obviously, the number that pops here, let's say um, this number here, negative three, is going to be x2 exactly. Okay. So once you have x2, you grab it. And then that's now your x2, as you see, negative three. And then you now look at f of x2, f prime of x2, and those ratios eventually to get to somewhere here, and that is hopefully your x3, okay? In the meantime, you check the difference of two successive approximations. So let's say like x1 was zero, and you got x2 to be negative three, so the difference between two is negative uh, three. If you take the absolute value of that, this is exactly what we call error or the precision. Okay, and, and, and for these two, uh, obviously, you look at the difference of these two in absolute value, and that's what you get here, 1.03846. Uh, uh, obviously, this is not the desired accuracy, so, so you just keep going, but you realize that, see, like, you keep going and realize that you're not getting close to any number. There is no convergence, as you see, or as you look at here, there is no convergence, as you see. Um, so the actual root is in fact positive, and then you're sort of like floating around negative numbers. Uh, so, so that means this approximation doesn't work. It, it sort of like fails. 
to converge to uh, the actual zero of the function. And you look at the error here. Errors are so huge. Normally we look for an error at the level of 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4, and then that's when we sort of like tend to stop the iteration, but the errors don't even decrease, and there's no even pattern, decreasing pattern in the errors. Let's just see what's going on in terms of the graph and then those numbers. So as you see that the actual uh, intercept, x-intercept is here, or in other words, the actual zero of the function is here. But as I said, we started with, uh, with x equals x1 equals zero. And then the first time, it's sort of like you look at the value of the function here and you look at the tangent line, equation of the tangent line. As you see that, even in the first step, the tangent line at this point intercepts the x-axis at negative three, which is way far from the actual zero of the, uh, of the equation. And then you go ahead and then check the tangent line here. As you see, tangent line takes you to negative two. And then you go up here and look at the tangent line here again. As you see that, this is negative one. And then you go back here and then look at the tangent line here. But tangent line takes you to zero again. So you are in a vicious loop, right? And, and at zero, as you see, you're going to shot back up here, and that's going to take you way back to negative three. So there's no way to converge or approximate to the, the actual zero of the problem. Well, one thing you can check in your own convenient time is that once you change your initial estimate, the, the, the game may change. For example, if you get an initial estimate on the right of the zero, like for example, you can start with number three, and then you run the Newton's iteration for a few iterations and then see if you get closer to the actual root of the problem. I think in this exercise the problem is that uh, initial uh, estimate is not good because it takes you far away from uh, the actual zero of the problem. But again, it's a good exercise for you to check. Uh, either get something very close to two on the left or somewhere on the right uh, to start with and then run the Newton's iteration scheme. I believe that um, you're gonna get closer and closer to the actual zero of the function. Now let me just remind you about this slide uh, in general um, that you can always check f times f double prime divided by f prime of x quantity squared in the absolute value. And, 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 and this would probably give you like a good interval for the condition for convergence. So in other words, if you choose your x outside of this interval, whatever the interval that spits out, then, then probably the convergence is not going to work. Um, so this is sort of like your good reality check to start with. So, so this, is, this is something you can come up with once the function expression is provided to you. Just find f double prime and f prime and then plug those back in and try to simplify this and get a good interval uh, containing the zero, uh, obviously. Um, so this will tell you how far uh, you should go starting from zero, uh, the origin, so that you can pick your initial estimate uh, from that interval. Right, in this video we have shown that the Newton's method fails to converge, so we were able to find uh, the zero of the function. And thanks for watching this video. Um, I'll see you in another video. Bye.